Hi beautiful people, it's your girl Margie Mays. Am I your girl? I don't know, but that's how I'm starting this video. Whoop. I have a really exciting topic today, and if I'm distracted, it's because my neighbors keep um, stomping up above me and it is a little bit distracting, but we are going to work on it. That being said, this topic of today's video is something that I personally really find interesting. You may not, but even if this isn't something that kind of strikes your fancy right away, hopefully you'll learn something if you do keep watching, but I'm gonna hop into it. Today's video, I have made a list of 10 tips that I have to increase your productivity during quarantine slash in life. Because we're in quarantine, I know it feels particularly pertinent out of the tongue twister, particularly pertinent and relevant because like literally right now I'm looking at my TV and I'm like, wow, that could be interesting. Or, you know, above me, everyone's home. They're just stomping around. It's a little bit distracting. So it can be tough to get things done that we need to do slash want to do right now. Right now, maybe you're like, I want to get ahead in some of these goals I have set, but I don't know how to do it. I'm fighting lack of motivation or the time batching skills or whatever they are. So here we go. I've always had a little prick in my heart to up my efficiency and my productivity. And I've made this little list of the 10 most effective things that have worked for me as specifically during quarantine time. Well, just in general, but I've been really implementing them during quarantine. So I'm going to hop into it. Calling this video 10 ways I'm being productive during quarantine. And I hope this gives back to you. Woo. I'm excited. Okay. Tip number one. Very excited about this one because I honestly put it first because I think it is maybe something you don't know about and it has been the most helpful thing for me mentally. It is called the tomato timer method, also known as the Pomodoro technique. It's this method of time batching. Essentially what happens is when I have a big task, let's say I'm like, I have to edit a full video, like I'm gonna use to edit this video I'm filming right now. It is hard for our minds to just be able to sit down and crank out something tedious and detail oriented and just something that requires a lot of focus and do it for six hours straight. That's super hard. Our brains can't really focus in that way. So this technique, essentially you take a timer uh, named off the original, like the tomato timers you'd use in the kitchen. But I literally just use my phone. I set the timer for 30 minutes. And for those 30 minutes, I put my phone on airplane mode and I work for 30 minutes straight. And when that alarm goes off, I get a break. And it's this way of time batching, like focusing all of your energy and all of your mental abilities on this one task, not multiple tasks, not doing emails on the side, just this one task. I was doing a little research on the Pomodoro technique. I guess each 30 minutes is called a Pomodoro. It's like one little set. In some schools of teaching this, you can work for 25 minutes, then the next five minutes is a break. And when you take that break, leave the spot you are doing your work. Go outside, go for a walk, get water, do whatever you need to do. Take those five minutes, get out of that scenario, and then go back to work for 25 more minutes. I'm not as hardcore about it, like 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, but when I'm really struggling and I'm like, I know I need to edit or I need to do something and I feel like I do not have the mental capacity, I set that timer for 30 minutes and I'm like, I know I can do 30 minutes. So take it whatever you want, 25 minutes at a time or 30 minutes at a time, you can do it. It makes one huge task so much more bearable and slowly you just, you do little chunks of that huge task and then all of a sudden that task is accomplished. So try this. I think it will really help you. It's so much better than if I'm like, okay, I'm gonna sit down for the next six hours and edit my video. Well, you know what I end up doing? I'm watching a little bit of a show. I'm doing my emails. I'm looking at Instagram. I'm texting. I'm doing all these things and it's, it's definitely not eight hours of work. Whereas if I do 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, I'm really getting stuff done in that time in those windows. So it's so effective. I just use my phone, bang, boom. I know there's an app called 3030. It's also for this. I guess the interface is just really clean and efficient looking. Or just get a tomato timer that you get in the kitchen, set it for 30 minutes and go. I swear it will help you. Okay, number two hack to increase my productivity is regular exercising and drinking water. And I feel like anytime I'm like, here's a life changing hack, I say exercise and drink water and it sounds so silly and stupid, but it really does matter. If you're exercising your body, it's so good for your mind. There are just limitless 
benefits of regularly exercising your body, especially during a time when we're stuck at home 24 hours of the day, please, I urge you minimum, get outside, put on a mask and go on a walk. Whatever you've got to do or pull up a free exercise app or website and get to town. I just did a workout on my YouTube. Go do it with me. It's a 30 minute exercise. Super easy. We'll clear your mind. Also, while you're at it, please be hydrating. Do you know that four out of five Americans are in some state of dehydration all the time? Truly. If you're thirsty right now, think about it you're already dehydrated. It's already too late. So start drinking water right now. I'm literally double fisting. I cannot get work done if I'm super hungry or I am so dehydrated. My brain is not as clear. It doesn't function properly. Get those on lock and get them on lock now and for the rest of your life. Bang, boom. It will increase your productivity, I promise. Productivity hack number three. This is something I've been doing and it's kind of related to exercise, but it's more specific with like time batching, etc. When I'm feeling tired or cranky or like I have a writer's block or I can't focus, I go on a walk. I don't know what the science behind going on a walk is other than it clears your head. It actually energizes me. Like I have that 2.30 feeling and I'm like, I don't wanna drink coffee. I go on a walk. It is so refreshing, clears my mind. Listen to a podcast or listen to some music you like or literally just let your thoughts flush out during the walk. The power of that or call a friend, any of the, the above. It is so good for you and it will increase your productivity. I can tell you that. All right, number four is something I'm personally addicted to. Get a planner. If you are looking to increase your productivity in general, I've said it a million times, you need a planner. Mine's so cute and has my little initials on it. It's awesome. I will link the one that I have. I love Erin Condren planners. I think they just thought of everything and they give me enough space to write all the things I want. I just so fervently believe if you want to increase your productivity or get more things done and achieve your goals, you must write so you can, first of all, see them on a piece of paper. And also, if you're trying to make a list of all the things you wanna get done and they're not written down, you're taking up mental space in here of keeping that list in order. Put it on a piece of paper, write it down, then you have the brain space to work on the tasks you need to do to check them off. Not to mention, if you are as meticulous as me and you write shower, and you check it off, it feels pretty good. Try it out, be as micro or as macro as you want in your planner and your planning life, but I promise you it will help you with your efficiency. And planners are really cute and really satisfying. They don't have to be pink, but they definitely can be. Okay, number five is kind of on the same topic, but I wanted to differentiate it, especially if you're like, I don't even have a planner right now. Something you can start right now. Number five, make lists. Inside this planner, I look like a crazy person because I just have lists within the planner all the time. But I believe in the power of lists, of to-do lists, or something like this little list I made right here that was like to mark my 30 day ab challenge. It's so satisfying to see the progress that you've made in life. Write it down, I'm like, oh my gosh, I did it. Or this 30 day arms, it's like, oh my gosh, I'm so close to the end. It helps me achieve so much more. It gives me that little rush of endorphins, like you got this, you're achieving something. It's every single little list you do is to me like climbing a little mountain. You start to believe in yourself. You just say, I can do something I put my mind to. And the power of that is incredible. I believe it just starts a virtuous cycle of getting more things done. Not to mention, like I said in the last thing, when you write something down, you don't have to remember it anymore. It's written down, you can check on it. You can leave your mind free to work on the specific tasks or projects you need the mental real estate state for. So number six, this is a little hack I've started. No TV watching until nighttime. And I know some people will say, well, if you watch TV at night, like you're going to stay up all night. I'll talk about that later. But I find that if I sit down and start watching TV in the middle of the day or like put it on while doing something mindless, my productivity goes down and I'm distracted. And then I get sucked into a keeping up with the Kardashians marathon and I didn't get anything done. Maybe I did like three emails that I could have done in like two minutes. Let's say it hits 5 p.m. and you've been working since eight in the morning. You're like, it's five o'clock somewhere. Turn your TV on and go ham. But until you get all those things done, literally keep the TV off. It's a hack. I employ it and I approve of it. Ooh, ooh, I like this one. Number seven, I talked about this in one of my favorites videos, but I have put red incandescent light bulbs in my lamps in my bedroom. The reason I have this is white light and blue light keeps us up at night. Blue light comes off of your phone. White light is in regular lamps. 
Those things keep our eyes up and keep us awake at night. So to get a better night's sleep, which will inherently improve your productivity and focus for the next day, you need a better night's sleep. I've changed the lamps next to my bed to red incandescent light bulbs. And if I need to be on my phone, I put my blue light glasses on. Blue light glasses on. Yes, you can see my ring light, LOL. But when I am reading at night, I love this book right now. Also it's self-help, this is very relevant. When I read this at night, I do not have any white lights on. I am not on my phone and I am just reading by the light of the red light bulbs and I will link them below in the description. They will help you drift off to sleep. It's wonderful. I think it feels like a spa in there. I love it so much. So blue light glasses, plus red incandescent light bulbs. It will help you fall asleep faster, which will help fight that whole vicious cycle of staying up later and later and later and later and later every night during quarantine, because I know insomnia right now is a real thing, okay? And help you rise and shine in the morning the next day. Number eight suggestion is have a morning routine. So I actually made a video about what my quarantine morning routine has been. It was like from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. I suggest finding a routine. It could take a minute to figure this out, but find a routine that's a balance of things that you love and look forward to, but also things that are productive and good for you. Whether that mine looks something like wake up, make coffee, work out, get emails done, go on a walk, start my work, film a video, edit videos, all of those things, and then start teaching and start the rest of my day. Or do your skincare routine, take a shower, a cold shower, a hot shower, whatever you particularly like. Try to find that balance of good for you things and things you look forward to. So that you can wake up and you're like, I'm ready to spring out of bed. I spring out of bed ready for my Dunkin' Donuts hazelnut coffee with a dash of cinnamon right now. So much. Okay, number nine productivity hack is do the things you need to do first. So what I like to do before I go to bed is I open up my planner and I look at what's on the schedule for the next day. And I like to write a list of the order in which I'd ideally do them. And the things I like to put near the top, the things I must get done, like the biggest things are, that are important to me and also the things I really don't wanna do. Something that I usually put first is working out. I love working out, but naturally I don't. Do you know what I'm saying? If I put working off until 5 p.m., I will not do it. It takes 45 times more willpower for me to work out at night than if I just do it in the morning before I have time to think. So I put it at the beginning of the day. That is a hack. I think it will help you a lot. Wow, I've kind of just bulldozed through this, but we've reached the bottom of the list. My number 10 way to be productive during quarantine is one of my favorite things. Find one or many accountability partners. So. What does that mean? When there's something I know I need to do, sometimes I find myself putting it off every single day. And this book, You Are a Badass by Jen Sincero, actually talks a lot about that. My conscious mind, like the cognitive part up here, knows that I need to do something, but my subconscious mind is usually scared of it. And so it makes me put it off every single day and I have to fight so hard to get those things done. Whether that's like email the person I'm a little bit afraid of emailing or ask the question or get that one project started that I've been a little bit afraid of starting even though they're the important things. I get an accountability partner. I text my friend and I say, hey, can you check up on me on Wednesday and make sure that I've done that or I've sent that email or I've started that project? And they do it. Because I've even found that if I set a reminder on my phone, I will just ignore it. But if I have a friend checking up on me, it changes the game. Because I know someone else out there is not only cheering me on, but checking in. And I'm like, I want to make sure I do this before they check in on me. And it really works. Another way to do it is with working out. Find friends to do it with. One of my best friends, Julie and I, have been doing 10 minute abs and 10 minute arms together on Zoom every night. We get it done and it's fun and we just talk through the whole thing and it's a blast. And then at 9 a.m. most days, I Zoom with my high school friends to do a circuit training. Bang boom. It's fun. It is a way to safely social distance and interact with people you love and they're holding you accountable. You get to wake up and do it with them. So you can use it for your business. You can use it for your working out. Use it in any arena of your life that you need a little bit of help being held accountable. Use people that you trust that you love and that you know are sincerely cheering you on. Okay, that's it. Those are my 10 hacks. Plus, 
I have a bonus one that didn't feel like it was its own category, but something that I've realized has helped me personally be more efficient is, if you didn't know, Instagram.com, Instagram messaging is open on the website. And for those of you who spend a lot of time on social media, especially Instagram, direct messaging, messaging, doing all these things, I have saved, shaved so many minutes slash probably hours off my day by being able to message on the computer because I'm way faster typer with my QWERTY keyboard for my laptop than I am like on my phone. So I just thought that was a bonus one. It would be helpful to know if you didn't know what's good. Okay, that's it. Those are my 10 tips. If they make you more productive during quarantine, I hope this helped. That makes me super happy. This little pot right here is smiling. She's so thankful. She loves you. But also, before I hang up this call with you, I just wanna say, this is not me saying in any way, shape or form that you need to be more productive during the quarantine at all. There are so many things going on in this world. There are so many things that are throwing wrenches in our lives right now that are challenging our mental stability and our normal, our normal flows. If you need to take time and you need to slow down and you are like, Margie, I cannot think about productivity right now, absolutely flush this video down the toilet. It does not matter. Please take care of yourselves. Take time for yourself. Go on those walks. Slow down the pace of your life. Take time for you. Be more intentional. Slow down. Check in with your loved ones. If that is what you need right now, I am here for you. I am here for it. I just made this video because I get a tickle out of hacking time, time batching, and being efficient when I feel like it because I love to get my flow going. So for those of you who really wanted this or were looking for something like this, I hope this helped. Really try the tomato timer method. It's bomb, that was my number one. And the rest of them, implement those into your everyday life. Okay, I love you so much. That was my little hickety hack. So with that, my friends, I leave you be. I love you so much. Ta-da! Okay, goodbye. Have a great quarantine. I will see you next time. Ding! So, like the people walking above me are just really pissing me off.